What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Legion United career mode episode. This is episode number 7. Now I think we are into and in today's episode I've got an interesting one for you. There's three games in today's episode so it's a jam-packed one for you guys and we start off by showing you some training with our right back day and Mosquitos or whatever you say his name. Um, he is the scout future star one that we signed. Obviously there's two more youth academy prospects coming through in green and uh, there's another one who's a holding midfielder. I can't remember the name of him though. Um, but my idea there is, like I mentioned a few episodes ago, if we train up the right back uh, to be a sort of winger, even though he may not be a default winger, we're actually going to play him out as a right midfielder if he does obviously grow well enough to be able to play in the side. At the moment we have Green there, so maybe we have to push Green to the other side of the pitch, but at the moment, my plan for the right back, the Scout Future Star, because he had such good physical stats, I did show it in a, in a previous episode, and because he had uh, already very good shooting on his car, on him, on his, what, I can't really say card, it's ultimate team, so I guess you just call it his attributes, um, because he had such good uh, physical and shooting ability, I decided that I was actually going to train him to be a winger rather than a right back. So we're not going to train his defending, we're just going to train his attacking ability and that's my sort of, well I guess that's what I want to have him do. And if he does come into the side, he will be playing as a forward, not as a right back. Even if he has low high, you know, work rates. I'm hoping his work rates won't be too messed up. Um, I'm hoping he'll have a good weak foot and an all right, you know, skill moves in terms of that as well. But I just, the main hope for me though, is that he doesn't have messed up work rates where I can't unfortunately play him as a right winger. That's my only sort of wish that if he is, because I can't check that yet until he actually hits 16 and I can promote him to the, to the senior side. So at the moment, all I can actually see his, is his uh, attributes rather than his actual like, you know, work rates, skill moves, weak foot, everything like that. And he is actually five foot 11 as well, I think. So decent height as well in terms of that. But the first chance would fall our way in the first game as we took on Derby here away from home as it came at the hand of Pablo Hernandez who forced the goalkeeper into a very good save early on here inside three minutes. Um, in all honesty as well, like I said, this is going to be the first game um, uh, last game, last episode rather, we beat someone, I think it was, was it Barnsley? 4-0. So I decided to bump up the difficulty to Legendary for this one and we actually created two chances very early on in the game and I was very surprised that we managed to create them. I actually set my team up here to be high pressing and keep the pressure on right from uh, the front as I think that's Pablo Hernandez again hits the post this time from his effort and in the 8th minute we could have been 2-0 up as it's two very good efforts for us and we were in control of this game. Like I said, I am controlling games but sometimes I just can't create the chances but today was not one of those days. There's three shots with Pablo Hernandez so far and it's some Unfortunately, we're not 1-0 up in this game as Derby would then come forward, but we steal the ball back from them and manage to get a chance again through Pablo Hernandez. He's just he's just so good in this game as we put through Liam Bridcut, but unfortunately, again, we are denied by the post. This one, though, was nice from Bridcut, I have to say. He got through a very nice uh, pass through in the end from Pablo Hernandez after he uh, managed to get it back through a lot of luck. But the effort from Bridco is a very, very nice effort at goal indeed. But unfortunately, it hits the post and comes back out. 72 minutes into the game, though, we managed to create yet another chance for ourselves. I was in control all the way through this game, and something just ticked in me this game. I was playing quite well, as we managed to make the chance here for Kamaru, who's in very good form after that hat-trick in the last game. Gets in and simply finishes that one into the top corner. It was very weird to play this one, because in terms of a game, um, I didn't feel as though I was in that much pressure in terms of the game, in terms of like other, other games that I've played. Um, I felt as though I was actually cruising and sort of being able to create chances thick and fast, as you've seen there with Kamaru getting through. But it wasn't like I was actually making the chances myself and actually attempting it. I was actually just playing the most stupid passes and not even attempting like that, the simple pass. I was just kicking the ball um, in different directions, hoping it would work out. And for some reason there, Kamaru ends up making a run, which I don't. I didn't even actually mean to play the ball through for Kamaru. It wasn't an intentional pass to Kamaru. I meant it for somebody else. But it ended up going through and we ended up scoring anyway. So it's all happy days when that happens. As in the uh, later stages of the game, Derby would create their chance as the header comes in from, I'm not sure who it was, it was someone coming in from the left as Rob Green safe hands in goal, catches it as we make another chance for ourselves in the 90th minute here. Chris Wood does well as they uh, put men forward to Derby trying to get a, a, an equaliser in the game. But unfortunately for them, they didn't and almost conceded the second there as Chris Wood would hit the post as it meant that we would win the game by a goal to nil as well. So that's very nice to see there. Um, and we've trained up again. Obviously, our, our scout future star is going to be the one that we're training at the moment. But like I said in the last episode, in a few episodes to come, Green will be taking over because he is featuring a lot more for us in the side. And I do want Green to be one of the better stars of the series. Him and the other two that we've got possibly may be here forever and possibly will be here for the longest time possible. Um, there is the championship table. Uh, Norwich sat at the top of it unbeaten at the moment and we're sat down in third. We're a number of points away. I think we're six off of Aston Villa and we're seven off of Norwich. So at the moment, it's looking like it could be a playoff season for us. We aren't actually managing two are going to finish in the promotion, you know, two, top two spots because at the moment... We are so far behind and I don't know what I can do to get my points back and be able to sort of claw it back. Because right now, 
both those sides just seem in ridiculous form and they just keep winning and winning and winning. And even when I'm winning, which is very rare because sometimes I'm drawing games, we have a number of draws as well in the league table, as you can see there, that you just, just saw. But I mean, at the moment, it is shaping up to be a playoff um, season for us. And I did mention in one of the episodes in the past that I'm not that great in terms of playoff records. So fingers crossed, if we do get in the playoffs this season and manage to go all the way to the final, I don't muck it up and we manage to get promoted to the Premier League. But that's, of course, that anything can happen between now and the end of the season. We could even get out of the playoffs. We could end up finishing in the top two. Who knows how it's going to end by the end of this as we main Silvestri. In the starting 11 for this one against, I think, uh, I can't actually remember who it's against here, but we actually named our second team because of the fact that, obviously, fitness and stuff uh, meant that we had to name a weak, well, I say weaker side. It's not that much weaker than our, na our main side. There's still a number of players who would actually fit into the main side. One of them being Antonsen, who's in very good form as well, just like Kamar Roof was, as we name him and Suleiman Dakara up front for us today. Alex Mark there, shown and is... Uh, He's a bit of an annoying one, really, because I do like Alex Moat, but at the same time, Pablo Hernandez is just playing way too good for him to not get in the side of Antonson. In the 10th minute of the game, turned his man brilliantly and fires high into the roof of the net. This guy, I'm telling you now, on the edge of the area is so dangerous, and he's such a good player. Um, him and Kamaru are definitely my best strikers at the club at the moment in terms of uh, finishing ability. Chris Woods had a few efforts at goal, but I just feel like Antonsen and Kamar Roof are the two strikers that I'm probably going to be going with in terms of that. As defended very nearly blocked that actually there. Um, it would have been uh, annoying if he'd have blocked it, but it's a very good effort in the end by Antonsen. But as I said, the defender was so, so close to actually blocking that and stopping us being a goal to nil up in this one. The second chance would fall our way as well, and not too long after Oh no, yeah, it's in the second half, basically. Right at the start of the second half, I actually meant to say. We actually created the second chance for ourselves. Straight from kickoff, I don't edit it, because you're going to see what happens here as we uh, basically just knock the ball about and keep possession of it. It goes to Moat, who gives it out wide here to our young man in green, Joel Green it is. Uh, he plays it inside to Antonsen, one more into Dakara. Dakara's going to give it one more back to Antonsen. It's a really nice uh, worked goal in the end from us. Nice finish by Antonsen into the bottom corner. But again, the defender should have probably done better because when I played Antonsen through, the defender actually was on the right side of Antonsen. As you can see, somehow Antonsen managed to put his arm out and stop the defender coming across to actually block the ball. And in the end, it's a great finish from our long, ha long head. I was about to say long haired beauty there. Long haired beast is what I meant to say as he made it 2 0. And that was the way the game would end as we won it by two goals to nil, picking up three points again. So, in terms of chasing down the front two that I've been going on about. As you saw the league table, uh, it's the greatest way possible to do it. As you can see, we literally had three shots, zero on target in this game. I told you, legendary difficulty, guys. Um, if those three shots hadn't have been the two goals there, that would have been a nil-nil ball draw. This is what I'm saying. For some reason, when I'm playing on legendary, I can't create enough chances to make the game entertaining. And sometimes the, 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 the computer just end up plastic around the back four and they're, they're settling for a draw. And it's like, well, at the same time... This is so boring to play because I have had it before where the computer have actually passed it around the back four from about the 60th minute settling for a nil-nil draw. And I can't tell you how annoying that is to play. So, yeah, that was a legendary game. We managed to win it by two goals. To nil, so I was very happy when I played it out. But the, again, it, to have three shots in a 90-minute game, you don't understand how boring that was to play in terms of that because I spent 12 minutes playing that game. Um, six minutes, half, half, obviously. So to only get three shots in an entire game was very, very boring. But... Nevertheless, we did take on Wolves for the third and final game of this episode. As you can see, we named our first 11 as it was before. I think Ronaldo Vieira hasn't been playing in a while, as we named Sako, I do believe, out on the right instead of Joel Green today. Um, Green does take Sako's place in the first 11, though. Don't, uh, don't worry about that. Green will be playing a lot more than Sako is. I just feel like Green's slightly performing better at the moment than Sako is. Um, Ronaldo Vieira, yet, um, to go on about Ronaldo, uh, hasn't actually been in the starting 11 for a while now, so uh, he will be featuring, I think, from next episode. If he's not in the next episode, he definitely will be in the episode after that. The reason being for that is because I switched the formation around, obviously, so at the moment, Bridcut and Pablo Hernandez are our two, you know, it, when we play the four, uh, we play 4-4-2 diamonds, so Pablo Hernandez is at the top of it and Bridcut is at the bottom. And then I think on the other side, on the second team, I actually play Moat at the top and I think I play Murphy at the bottom. So he will be featuring soon, though, don't worry about it. He, will, he hasn't, I haven't just forgotten about him, but he definitely will be featuring to come and he definitely will be at the club for a long time as we made him sign that extra long contract I think in episode is it three is maybe even in episode Wolves two we made him sign an extra long contract to keep him here for fiction. even longer Cameron Borthwick Jackson though was on loan at Wolves from Manchester United he's rated very highly at Manchester United I do uh, think he will be wanted for the future but at the same time Man United have a number of youngsters who are very good one of them being Marcus Rashford who we all know about very much don't we let's face it Marcus Rashford has come in and he's scored on, I think every debut he's had since uh, scoring on his debut for Manchester United in the uh, European Cup, or rather the European, not the European Cup, the European Cup, that's what it's called. Um, 
Uh, they also have Timothy Fonsu Mentor as well, who I rate very highly. I do believe Fonsu Mentor is going to be an extremely good player. And although I'm not a Manchester United fan, I can't wait to see how Fonsu Mentor gets on at United because I think he's going to be a very solid player for them in the future. First chance of the game, though, would fall, I think, our way in this one as a... Uh, yeah, no, wait, I think it fell Wolves' way in the 50th minute of the game. This was a really frustrating game to play for me. I can't tell you how frustrating this was. It just felt as though I was trying to create chances, but at the same time, Every time I create chances, Wolves are getting men behind the ball and then just countering on me like this. And uh, they had two shots within the first, you know, 60 minutes of this game. It took right until the second half for any highlights to happen. But then they had two in quick succession and safe hands Rob Green in goal made two very good saves to keep us in it. As in the 60th minute, we managed to create ourselves the first chance of our game as well. As we give it inside to, I think that's Kamar Roof who hits the bar from his curling effort. And what a save by the goalkeeper. Gets up so fast to punch that one away and stop us scoring in the 63rd minute of the game. Very unfortunate. But as you can see, we don't actually edit anything out because a nice bit of passing play gets us another chance in this one. Pablo Hernandez whips across to the back post. Cleared away by the Wolves man. Not fully dealt with though as Wolves end up uh, sort of pottering about with the ball and end up making a mistake as he went to take on, uh, I think that's uh, Alex, Alex Iwobi on the left hand side. Um, but Alex Iwobi's pace gets him back in the ball. Pablo Hernandez takes it on, gives it into Anderson. Anderson really nice turn and when there's so many bodies in the box like that it can be so difficult to get a strike away. But Anderson does it and what a goal again by Anderson. He's just so, so good at doing that on the edge of the area. Firing it into the top corner yet again for us. And it made it a 1-0 in a game that was very frustrating for me to play. There was no real chances up until the chances you've seen there and until the second half before Antonsen managed to put it in the back of the net for us. It's, it couldn't go any, any higher than that. Look at how close that was to hitting the bar and coming back. But thankfully for us, it didn't do that and we were 1-0 up in a game that we honestly didn't deserve to be winning in. Uh, Wolves Rugger was just um, very good. Their tactics were on point. And in terms of that, I just didn't feel as though we deserved to win that game. But thankfully we did because I tell you what, it was a, such an annoying game to play. Wolves got men behind the ball. They literally had one striker. Everyone else was uh, defending. And when your players don't make runs, as my players aren't making runs currently in the game, uh, it can be very difficult to break them down. And that's exactly what happened. And they caught me on the counter a couple of times, but safe hands Rob Green in goal made a couple of saves for us that kept us in it. And then obviously we hit them uh, with that one, sh one chance. And as soon as we hit them with that one chance, three came straight afterwards or two, was it? And uh, we managed to finally put the ball in the back of the net. But I want to thank you all for watching this episode of Korea Mode. I want to thank you all as well for being patient with me before I get you know to the hang of it and bump it up to legendary completely. If we make it to the Premier League in the first season, I definitely will be bumping it up to legendary difficulty. You'll be seeing me getting smashed every game. So I just want to thank you all for being so patient with me. Um, and I want to thank you all for the support you've shown on my channel so far in this uh, great year that's going to be a FIFA 17. Uh, but other than that, I'm out and I hope you've enjoyed. But I'm out. Peace.